Hello everyone and welcome to Bridging the Gap. I'm your host, Kelly Lavelle. Today I'm joined with Rebecca Mason. She is in Australia right now and she is founder of Time Masons, a startup venture which focuses on connecting busy professionals and small business owners with premium personal assistance support. Her mission is to help clients save over a million hours by 2020. Rebecca, thank you so much for joining us today. Could you perhaps take some time to share a little bit about how you ended up founding um, the Time Masons and how your journey began? Hi, um, firstly, thank you for having me. It's great to be on the podcast and congratulations on such a successful movement to date. I think it's fantastic what you and the team are doing. So um, I'd just like to say straight off the bat, I think you're doing a great job. Um, so in answer to your question, bit of a longish story, but I'll try and keep it as concise as possible. I graduated from uni um, probably about 10 years ago now with an economics degree and got into marketing out of that and started working here in lovely Sydney um, for about three years and then uh, just decided that I think it was time to take a new life adventure after having done a lot of corporate marketing and moved to London where I was for the following five years. And I worked and managed uh, large teams for a lot of international brands and corporate marketing again, which was great. And then got to the end of that five year period and nearly realized um, it, it was time to come back home to Sydney and uh, just prioritize lifestyle design as uh, something that I wanted to pursue. So I moved back to Sydney and that was two years ago now. And at the time, a lot of my old managers from my old roles were working for the Accentures and the Deloitte's and the Ernst and & Young's and um, they, they were offering me jobs, but I couldn't quite justify going back into that corporate environment. I think the stars just aligned for me to be able to start my own business at the time which uh, I just thought it's a great opportunity. It's been something that I've wanted to do for um, probably since I even began uni. I'd always wanted to uh, engage in my own journey and be able to learn along the way, not knowing that it's actually much harder than working for someone else, which I think you don't realize a lot of the time before you start. Um, and then I started the Time Masons just because I realized that there are a lot of busy um, professionals and small business owners that just needed an extra bit of support. Um, and that's been running for about a year and a half now. And that business runs itself, which is fantastic. And we pivoted the model uh, quite recently where we've just seen a niche in small businesses who deal with large corporates that need PA support. And that's been the focus. And since then, I've been working with uh, fantastic entrepreneurs like yourselves and getting other more philanthropy projects up and running. And I consult to large corporates on their innovation and startup policies. And I do a lot of speaking and writing and interviewing other entrepreneurs. So uh, that's been a fairly iterative process, none of which I had actually planned, but it has turned out to be the best learning curve I could ever have embarked on and has led me down the path of being able to thrive as both a person and I think as a business owner and yeah it's been fantastic and I just every day is exciting every single day is um, a, a new a new step in the right direction so yeah that was quite long-winded <laughs> <Sorry. laughs> no I appreciate that though because in honesty I find most entrepreneurs when explaining their journey it is long-winded because entrepreneurship very much is that long winding road so to speak where there isn't necessarily a straight path that can be explained in a in a succinct way um yeah. <laughs> with that in mind one of the struggles in my experience that i find with entrepreneurship is finding direction or kind of um direction to in the course so to speak how did you go about finding um kind of your your sweet spot for lack of a better word because you you certainly have kind of seemed to have found um your your niche in, and are excelling um can you walk me back a little bit on kind of how you found that yeah so it is very difficult and it's probably the thing that can make or break certain businesses and i think uh, for, what worked for me was being able to take a step back and look at both the numbers from a business side and the business overall and looking at my personal life and what I really wanted to get out because I think uh, as you learn this going from corporate into running your own business uh, you very quickly see that 
uh, works, not just like, of course, work, but it is your whole life. So it shouldn't just be treated as, oh, that's my day job. And then I just start the rest of my life when I get home. It's absolutely not, not the case. And so I took a two week break um, at the start of this year where I just reanalyzed everything. And that was one really important learning for me because up until that point, I really was burning the midnight oil like 16, 18 hour days, constantly um, acquiring new customers, maintaining old ones, training new people, recruiting new staff. Um, and it was at the time I couldn't see it, but it was really running me down. And when my when my family first said, well, let, let's all take a family vacation, we'll go away for two weeks. That was, you know, a non-option to begin with. And then we, of course, went away. And I'm so grateful for that experience because it was the first two weeks in a nine month period, which I'd actually been able to switch off and calm down and reflect and be able to decide, okay, this is the direction going forward. This is the 80% of the effort that's going to sorry, other way around, 20% of the effort that's going to deliver the 80% of results, not the other way around. And that's a very difficult thing to be able to do if you're constantly just in that daily grind. Um, so I think in answer to your question, how do you help set direction or realize how to kind of pivot or move forward when you're coming across a barrier? Very much being able to actually t take a step away and realize that the world's not going to collapse when you're not there and invest in yourself by being able to take a, a little bit of time out just so you can reflect and review the situation as it really is to help you take the next step forward. Um, having said that, um, at the same time, it, it's really important to surround yourself with mentors and people who you aspire to be like or they've led a journey and a life not just uh, one particular goal that you want to aspire to, but I yeah, think looking at it as an, at an individual, as a holistic being. So if you want to achieve a financial goal and you want to be able to manage a family and you want to have a successful business with happy staff, then being able to find a mentor like that, yes, is very difficult, but it's very important as opposed to, I want just to make $2 million by the time I'm X amount, like but by the time I'm X years old, that's obviously much easier to find. But at the same time, if you don't look at the rest of the person, you won't kind of see what sacrifices that they've made. So in, in trying to define what you want and trying to find the people who you want to aspire and be like, absolutely have to find the person that aligns with you the most and surround yourself with those people because they will help um, at the very least, encourage you towards the direction and the path where you're going. I hope that answers that question. <laughs> yes, well, I really, uh, I appreciate your answer because uh, I'm definitely one of those entrepreneurs who, who works the 16, sometimes 18 hour yep. days yep. and nonstop. And it is very difficult for me to find time to take a break or allow myself to take a break. So I respect that you were able to take those two weeks away because I can appreciate how hard that would have been, but also understand the value in that because uh, you do get sometimes caught up in tunnel vision, even if you don't realize it at the time, just because you're so focused on having to run all your business that you can kind of miss all the signs and opportunities that are outside of your 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 little bubble so to speak <laughs> oh completely look i completely understand and before you know it like your to-do this list gets long and you know we've got pr going on this week or we've just uh, like a client's come up with a new event that we need to help them with all of them great opportunities but you know at that time i was collapsing uh, i was just fainting left right and center and it was a uh, okay this isn't how um, and that's a that's a really good indication of your body telling you to stop. You know, like our, our bodies are quite ancient when you think about it. So we so they have a way of being able to tell us when something's going right and wrong. And um, for me, I, if you're if you're fainting on public transport at least once a week for a period of a month, that's indication enough to be able to take a step back and know that yes. Um, this might be going on, but you can take a step back or just start saying no to people. So I started saying no at that time to new clients, bringing on more work, bringing on more people because um, it it wasn't worth um, the, the return at the time. And that's also a very difficult thing to do to tell to, to say no, especially if the opportunities seem fantastic at the time. Looking at um, 
the opportunities right now with for entrepreneurship um do you feel that there are any actions that we could take to bridge the gap to better support entrepreneurs yeah um funny funny as you say that i'm working on a project here in sydney at the moment to help connect mentors to younger people because i think that the it seems quite daunting um, to be able to start out when you know i've been in that situation as well but going from oh i have this fabulous idea to <laughs> how do you actually take that next step there is a bit of a disconnect but um i think that there's a lot of opportunity and i'm not sure i mean like i follow other countries and how they're investing in entrepreneurship and innovation and the startup space we're very lucky here in australia that there has been a big investment in that from the, the government sense over the last 12 months so there's a lot of opportunity here and a lot of programs here for young people wanting to get started but i i definitely think that there needs to probably be a more overarching or more well-defined program to help people get to that stage to build a successful business because it's easy enough to start a business to but to grow and maintain a successful one is a completely different ballpark. I guess I want to focus a teeny bit more on, on that point in the sense of what do you feel is the differentiator between, um, so to speak, of going from startup to successful or sustainable business is there a, a key kind of factor that you have seen um, that determines that um funny because if you asked me that question 18 months ago for me it would have been well if you're turning over a profitable business or you're turning over you know multi-millions then of course you must be by definition successful now i don't think that's the case i think if you're making enough to be able to cover your cost then that's like from a financial sense then that's successful, that's being able to maintain a business. Um, at the same time, it really boils down to the individual and what they want to get out of the actual experience. So when I started off, it was very much, well, I want to be able to grow and I want to be able to see month on month growth and want to be able to turn over a profitable business line. That's my, that, those are my two main goals. Whereas now when I'm looking at business and projects that I work on, um, there's a financial element, but that's just in terms of being able to maintain a business you, uh, once you start going into a lot of debt or you can't cover the debt that you've borrowed. Um, it probably becomes untenable both from a business sense, but probably on, on an emotional level if you're the one responsible for that bottom line. But um, I've got quite a few other like holistic goals about the business in terms of what I want to be able to learn from the opportunity, how I can integrate it in terms of my uh, managing a lifestyle design, like what what do I want the business to, to look like for both um, output and what I'm doing for people, but as well as how it's an investment back in myself. And um, I, I don't think that that's encouraged enough in terms of how businesses are actually looked at um, because some people define it by how much money is turned over some people define it by how much of the midnight oil they burn um, as a reflection of an achievement whereas it, it really boils down to the person who's running that business to say well the financial metric is one thing but i want several other metrics to help to be good um determinants of success and that might be we want growth or we might want to learn and by learning it means we're going to expand into a new market for example and those values always i think come from the top and that permeates throughout the organization but i think that that individualized view on what success is for an independent person is isn't influenced enough in the way that i think that we're taught unless you've gone through that journey yourself which I'm sure you're already going through. And if you had one tip for um, young entrepreneurs who are starting out, looking kind of back on your journey, like one thing that if you would have known then, um, what would have that been? <laughs> oh, it's, it's hard to say one because it's probably like a hundred. Um, the one best piece of advice I could or tip that I could give like on my learning is that Rome wasn't built in a day. And I don't mean that in the sense that you know, that's quite obvious, but in the sense that small habits and small tasks add up to big achievements. So 
um, instead of looking at every day in terms of, uh, well, I want to be able to build the next Google or I want to be the next Mark Zuckerberg. And I do hear that a lot. And I think that that motivation is fantastic and we shouldn't be discouraging that whatsoever. But it's just an understanding that for those businesses, they are where they are now because of 10, 20 years of learnings, failings and experiences. And those learnings, failings and experiences were iterative daily processes. So th there were chunks of being able to do certain daily achievements and that adds up. So for me, when I started, I was in the mindset of, I want to be able to build and grow something successful, what was seemingly overnight as opposed to now, which is okay. I'm just going to take one day at a time and I have like a daily goal. Um, and as part of those daily goals, they add up into something quite larger and I can see that happening. And that teaches you a lot of patience and it helps build momentum because I think um, some people can give up or just walk away if they don't feel like they're getting to that Facebook status or that Google status quick enough. So my one piece of advice would be be able to manage yourself on it in terms of a daily basis and be able to grow uh, or, or manage every day growing up to smaller goals and those smaller goals add up to big ones. So what I'd recommend is having like a daily uh, che checklist or routine sheet that kind of works back from you know your quarterly goal for example so this month i'm going to do this and this the next month will mean that i'm going to achieve something else and that's going to lead into what are my overall achievement for that quarter so you know if you're writing a book for example you might start with writing the first 100 pages in that first month then you get to 200 pages the second month and then the 300 pages the third month it's and that breaks down to doing say like two or three pages per day it's just breaking it down into these really bite-sized chunks and just understanding that every day is an iterative process and you just keep going with those small things and you just keep moving and if you keep doing that it'll add up to that end goal it just it won't happen overnight and looking at um, the young generation right now, um, this series is focused on looking at uh, as the change generation. So when you think of youth today and change generation, what does that mean or represent to you? Okay, so uh, I think I'm I'm probably on the borderline of a couple of generations, probably mentally more than anything else. So I, I, I see a lot from both uh, both sides, which I think is interesting. So. I think firstly, when we look up to the generations that have come before us, they've been trained and not indoctrinated, but they've been taught to live life a certain way. And that's been, you know, go to school, go to uni, get a job, get a mortgage, uh, have kids and, you know, you work up to retirement, you get a break at the end, which is, um, that's, you know, nothing wrong with that. But I think that for the younger generation, we, especially within the startup space and the ability to create you know, like whatever we want, whenever we want, which is we're so lucky to A, be able to do that and usually B, be able to afford it at a nominal cost. Um, I think we're beginning to see choice and sovereignty of lifestyle design. Um, and uh, I mean, Tim Ferriss talks about that in his book, The 4-Hour Workweek, but I think we're beginning to question what the right model is for us. And we're seeing a lot of encouragement for individuals to say, well, or, or, or to kind of push back and say, well, no, I'm not gonna take that five day a week job because that actually doesn't work for me. I'm only gonna work maybe part-time and I'll work on my startup on the side and maybe I'll do a bit of this, that, and the other because I can afford to do that. And I can afford to learn in a different way and I don't have to take my lifestyle as the status quo like my parents did or maybe my grandparents have. So I think the change generation will definitely be a different movement in terms of mobility in the way that we live our lives and choice because they've got access to so much more information that our parents and our grandparents have. And now that they're being disseminated with that information almost immediately, uh, I would hope that it's being used or will be used to its advantage to be able to help themselves and, na and nations overall make better quality decisions. Incredible. I really appreciate us, your time today and sharing some of your uh, your experiences in, in your journey. I, 
I really appreciate always learning an entrepreneur's journey because like like we discussed, it, it is always very unique, but I do find those common themes of like yep. saving some me time, <laughs> understanding <laughs> that greatness takes time and patience. Patience is not that my virtue, so but something that I, I've learned. Um, but I really do appreciate you taking some time to share some of your journey um, and in, in being part of this project. So thank you. For those of you listening, it's your turn. What do you think? Add your thoughts to the discussion using the hashtag Bridging the Gap. And give this podcast a thumbs up if you like some of the comments and advice that has been shared today.